Hi, Integrated Math One. Welcome to lesson 5.3.2a. Um, we're going to be proving triangle congruence theorems. Today, we're going to focus on the SSS triangle congruence theorem. And if you don't know what that is, don't panic. We're going to talk about it. So our learning goals for today, we're going to use the definition of congruence. Um, dealing with, we've been doing that with our rigid motions. We're going to show that two triangles are congruent. And we're going to prove the side, side, side congruence theorem. Yes, we are. It's going to be awesome. So our key terms today are going to be side, side, side congruence theorem, also known as SSS, triple S. But along with that, we're going to talk about uh, this whole idea of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We often abbreviate that as CPCTC, just a little easier to work with. So you've defined transformations that produce isometries, right? If they're isometries, they keep the same size and shape, right? Rotations, reflections, uh, translations, we keep those same size and shape. Um, but we can now take this a step further. I can prove triangles are congruent in all kinds of ways. So congruent line segments and congruent angles are often denoted using special markers. So yeah, I mean, I could bust out a ruler, I could measure, I could be like, that's five centimeters, that's five centimeters. But that's a lot of work to do for every problem. And so usually in geometry, what we do is we use particular marks to help us know that things are congruent. So we use slash markers to indicate congruent line segments. All right, I'll show you what I mean. If I'm like, hey, I have, and I need my pen. Come here, little pen, there it is. So if I have um, something like this, and actually that's a terrible drawing. Let me try that again. So if I have something, I don't know, like this, and this, I use slash markers. If I want to say that these two top pieces are congruent, I'll put a little, a little slash mark, a little like dink, dink. And that indicates that those two pieces are congruent. If multiple line segments contain that single slash marker, that implies that all of those line segments are congruent. So any segment I see that has that single slash, I can assume they're all congruent to each other. Um, you can also use double and double and triple slash markers to know other segments are congruent. So let's say I want to be like, hey, this guy is congruent to this guy, but not congruent to that one. I can put a little double slash on it. So that tells me these two guys are congruent to each other, but not necessarily those other pieces. And you can go further, right? I can be like, I'm going to make a triple mark to show that those guys are congruent to each other, but not to the other pieces. You get the idea? It's a matching marks game. For angles, we use arc markers. So arc markers in, are used to indicate congruent angles. When multiple angles contain a single arc marker, this implies that those angles are congruent. Um, to Again, to show you what I mean, if I'm like, okay, that guy has a little arc, whoa, if I put a little arc there and a little arc there, that indicates that those two angles are congruent to each other, right? Of course, we can use double and triple arc markers to denote other angle congruencies, just like we did before. It's about matching marks. So if I do a double arc marker here and a double arc marker there, that would indicate that those two angles are congruent to each other, but not necessarily congruent to these guys with the single arc on them. This is not my best drawing. You're going to see some better drawings in a little bit. So we use arc markers for our angles to show angles are congruent, and again, you're just looking for matching marks. That's all we're doing. So if we come over here on page 145 and 5-145, we have a bunch of markers. And thus, we can match stuff up. I see that AB has the same mark as DF. So we can say that AB is congruent to DF. I see that BC has the same mark as DE. So I can say BC is congruent to DE or ED, whichever way. I also have a bunch of angles here, like I see a little single mark, a little single mark here. So that means that angle, uh, this angle here, which we'll call, oh, I see it over here. So angle A is congruent to angle C, B, D. And yes, I have to use all three because if you just say angle B, I don't know which angle you're talking about. Ah, 
So when I don't, if I just said angle B, I wouldn't know which one we're talking about. So we'll call this angle CBD that I can trace with my finger pencil and know that's the angle I'm talking about, as well as angle F. So angle A, angle CBD, and angle F are all congruent to each other. They have matching marks. But I can also see that angle ABC, again, I don't want to just call it B, is this has the same marks as angle E, D, F. Again, I don't just want to call it angle D because there's a couple angles here and I don't know what's what. So these two angles are also congruent, which we can tell because they have matching marks. So here's what I would like you to do. Um, you've got two of these problems on page, on the bottom of page 145, you've got A and you've got B. Can you write the congruent statements represented by the markers in each diagram? Tell me which angles are congruent, which sides are congruent, matching marks. That's all you're doing. Go ahead, hit pause, work this out, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. And in the meantime, the lights have gone out. But hopefully by now you figured this out. I see matching marks on R and on W, so I'm gonna say great. That means matching marks means that angle R is congruent to angle W. Yay. I also see matching marks down here. And while I'm tempted to call this angle X and angle Z, there's actually a couple of angles here at X, and so I wanna be careful. I'm gonna make sure I label this correctly. So X is the center of it but one side goes to T, one side goes to W. So I'm gonna call this angle T, X, W. If you call the angle W, X, T, that would also be okay. And it's congruent to this guy, little matching marks here as well. Um, I'm gonna call that one R, T, S, or S, T, R, either way is fine. The vertex does need to be in the middle but those two angles are equal to each other, are congruent to each other as well. They have little matching marks. Here's the typed version. If you want to see it all pretty and typed and looking nice and not my wonky writing on my tablet, that's okay too. What about this one? Did you sort this one out? So the first thing I noticed was I had a couple of sides. I saw slash marks. I was like, oh, those match. So because those match, I'm like, cool, 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 cool. So side TD, segment TD, is congruent to side or segment DZ. So I'll write that down. I do see some angles here as well. Um, I can call this one angle Z, that one's totally cool, but it's congruent to this other angle. I don't wanna just call it angle D because I've got a couple of angles here, so let's be careful how we name it. Let's call this angle T, D, M. We'll call it angle T, D, M. You also could have called it angle M, D, T. As you can see, there's more than one name for this. I just don't want to call it a plain angle D because I have more than one angle here and I don't know which one I'm talking about if I'm not a little more specific. Here's the typed up version. I'll erase mine. Here's the typed up version if you want to see it all pretty. Yep. In fact, they didn't just call that Z, they called it angle T, Z, C. Ooh, so fancy. Beautiful, wonderful work. So now you got the idea. Matching marks means things are congruent. Hooray for us. So we've played around with triangles a little bit before. Let's see if we can prove triangles are congruent given a very different minimal criteria. Like what's the bare minimum I can get away with to be like, those triangles are congruent. So I've got two triangles such that three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of the second triangle. Um, you can prove that this criteria is sufficient to demonstrate that my triangles are congruent, that everything matches. So here I have two triangles, triangle V, A, R. I have triangle B, K, F. And they've told me some important information. You might wanna make a, like highlight this or something. This is important information. I'm gonna highlight it. If you don't have a highlighter, it's cool. You might wanna underline it or something. They have told me that VA is congruent to BK, that VR, pardon me, not congruent, equal to, that VR is equal to BF, and that the length of AR is equal to the length of KF. So I'm just gonna highlight those a little bit. This is called 
we can use here, I'm going to rephrase this, you can use here the side, side, side congruence theorem. Often we just refer to it as SSS because I don't want to write side, side, side congruence theorem over and over again. It drives me crazy. So we usually just write SSS. And it says that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. You can even take this a step further, though. If you decide your two triangles are congruent, SSS is one way of doing that, then that means each part of one triangle is congruent to the corresponding parts of all of the other triangle. We call this corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We usually abbreviate it as CPCTC because I don't want to write that over and over again. And CPCTC states that corresponding angles and sides in two triangles and two congruent triangles are congruent. So the idea here is we start by proving our triangles are congruent. SSS can help us do that. And then once we've done that, we can say, hey, since my triangles are congruent, all my other corresponding parts must be congruent too. And you can say all the other junk is congruent as well. Let's talk about this. So let's come back to this example that we were just looking at earlier, these lovely triangles. And I know we're skipping around a bit. Don't panic. So we're on page 149. And so we have our triangles again, triangle VAR, triangle um, BKF. And we have our little statements from earlier. So here's what I want you to do. First, I want you to tell me why the triangles are congruent. And then I want you to tell me what else is congruent as a result of that. Hit pause. See if you can figure this out. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. So for me, when I do these problems, I find it really, really helps me to make marks on my triangles. It just does. It just helps me know what, what's what and who goes who with who and all that junk. So they said that V, the length of VA, oh, I need my pen, not my highlighter. The length of VA is equal to the length of BK. So that means VA is congruent to BK. So I'm going to put matching marks on those guys. We're also told VR is equal to, the length of VR is equal to the length of BF. So VR should be congruent to BF. And they said the length of AR is equal to the length of KF. So AR, boom, 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 I'll put a triple mark on that, should be the same as KF, boom, 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 I'll put a matching triple mark on that. And now I can write some congruent statements, right? I can say that side VR, we'll put a little hat back on it, is congruent to side BK. Again, I'll put a hat on it. They are asking for congruence statements after all. I know that side VR is congruent to side BF. I know side AR is congruent to side KF. So here's my first statements. Check it out. Side, 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 side. All three sides match up. So this tells me, and order is so important, order is so important. This tells me if I name this triangle, triangle VAR, should be congruent to the other triangle. And since I started with V, I need to start with B on that one. Since I went V to A to R, I have to go B to K to F. Okay, B, K, F. And we know these are congruent by the side, side, side congruence theorem. So we've done the first part of this. We're like, great, my triangles are congruent by SSS. Good job, S. The next thing is it is asked to write congruent statements for all of the pieces. So let's keep this going. By C, P, C, T, C, by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, all the bits have to be congruent. Well, I've already got all the sides, but this means I also know that the angles are congruent. This means I also know that angle V is congruent to angle B. This means I also know that angle A over here should be congruent to angle K up over here. And last but not least, that means that angle R, angle R should match up with angle F. Those guys should also be congruent. So I have side, side, side. That means my triangles are congruent. So by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, I can say that the angles are all going to be congruent as well. All right. If you're still head still swimming a little bit, don't panic. We're going to play with this a little bit more next time. But in the meantime, I'm going to erase this because my writing is annoying. 
There you go. In the meantime, there's the pretty typed version of it. As always, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. And I'll see you guys soon. Let me know if you got questions. Come talk to me. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.